Welcome to Don's Key Tech. In this video, we are going to be exploring ways on how to control our keypad membrane component using our Raspberry Pi. We will discuss first how this component is set up and how to wire it with our Raspberry Pi. We then will discuss options on how to read this component by using polling, or to interrupt. We'll explore these two options in this video. Are you excited? Then let's start exploring. Let us discuss first the wiring diagram of our keypad to our Raspberry Pi. Keypad membranes are connected in a matrix manner with rows and columns. The horizontal lines are assigned as rows, so this is row 1, row 2, row 3, and row 4. The vertical lines are assigned as columns, so this is call 1, call 2, call 3, and call 4. Under the hood, each of these characters are represented by a membrane switch. There are eight pins exposed by the keypad. The first four pins are assigned as to row 1, to row 3, and row 4. The next four is assigned to call 1, call 2, call 3, and call 4. To control this component, we just need to connect all of these pins to the GPIO pins of our Raspberry Pi. Notice that there is no external power needed to control this component. That is all for the wiring. And now we proceed on how we are going to read our keypad component with our Raspberry Pi. Please look at the schematic here. As I have mentioned earlier, each of the characters in the keypad are using membrane switches under the hood. So this is our 4x4 keypad membrane. And we have the characters here, 1, 2, 3, A, and two, up to the last character, D, represented as keypad membrane switch. Initially, each switch is connected in a matrix manner to minimize the number of pins needed to control this component. To read this keypad component, we initially set all column pins to high using the internal pull-up resistor. And for each row, we send a pulse of low signal, after which we check each column pins if a low reading is registered since we are connecting it directly to the ground. So for example, if we press 1 here, notice that this pin will be directly connected to the ground signal. And if we read this column pin, then it will register a low signal, meaning that it was pressed. Then we proceed reading the next column pins until we reach the end. When we finish scanning this first row, then we proceed to the next row and check each column also. We do this until we finish the whole row and then we start reading all over again. That is how the polling of our keypad membrane switch is done so that we will know which key was pressed in our keypad membrane. So, let's discuss a little bit about the code that I have shown earlier in the video. As I have mentioned, we can read the keypad input from our Raspberry Pi by using two ways. One is using the polling mechanism and the other is using the interrupt. The code explanation is in the companion write-up of this video which is in the, in the description below and is also available in my GitHub page. I have explained it line by line so that you would understand how the the code works. In the end of the article also, I have used a Python package which is pad 4 pi which uses interrupt in reading the keypad membrane. I hope you take some time in reading that post. So, let us do a quick scan on the code that I have used in this video. This is available in my GitHub account so you can either clone or download it in your local directory. The first 
code is the test keypad polling.py. So, initially, I set all of the GPIO pins for the rows and columns. Then I set up each row's pins as output so that we can either see it set it to high or low. The column pins are assigned as input so we can read its values and is pulled up by the inter internal resistor. We then create a function called read row wherein initially we set out a low signal and then read each column to check if it, was, if it was pressed. This is exactly how I explained it in the schematic section of our keypad membrane. In the next line of code, it's the polling part. As you can see, we have an indefinite loop here that reads each row line by line by calling our read row function. This is why I call this the polling option. If we open the test edge detection that way, then we can see a little bit of different code. There is no polling for each rows or columns, but we will be attaching event for each switch. Example in, in this code is when I click the number one character in the keypad membrane. This is assigned in the row pin 17 and column pin 23. I have added an add event detect to this pin and have an event callback called event callback function. Whenever the switch is pressed, then this callback function is called. So it is as if we are interrupted that the switch was pressed. So that's why, that's why I call this an interrupt mechanism. So in the next section of the code, we don't need to add any polling mechanism for each switch, but rather for each switch, we just add an add event detect for each pin. But we now understand an interrupt, I then use a library called the pad4py, which is in this, in this link, which is an interrupt-based Python library for reading a matrix keypad using the Raspberry Pi GPIO pins. If you will take a look at the code, which is in my test keypad interrupt.py, I exactly use this package. As you can see, we just assign a keypad, rows and column pins, and then we pass it into the factory method of our pad for pi. After which, we, re we register a key press handler that gets called when any of the keypad membrane is switched. So in my case here, I have a print key method here or functions. This will be called whenever the key press is done in any of the character in my keypad membrane. Hi! If you like the videos that I have created, then please consider subscribing to my YouTube channel and other social media channels. Hit the not notification button so that you will get notified for new contents. Please do comment, comment like, and share. Happy exploring!